Welcome everybody. Hello. Good afternoon or evening, depending on where you are in the world. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Ryan Lathan. I'm the manager of marketing and communications here at Fort Worth Opera. We're exciting. We're excited to be hosting the third masterclass today of the amazing Jennifer Rowley's Summer Virtual Artist Residency. This week, we are thrilled and honored to have with us a very special guest, internationally renowned Spinto Soprano, Martina Arroyo. Yay! Yeah. Hello. I'm so glad to be here. Thank you so much for joining us. We're so honored. We're super honored. Don't be uh, honored, I'm the one oh, having oh, fun. No, 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 that's fine. Uh, <laughs> in addition to conquering the opera world, she is the founder of the Martino Arroyo Foundation and the prestigious Prelude to Performance, one of the country's premier young artist training programs. It is a gift to have you here with us today. Yes, Thank you. Really is. Congrats Thank you to our so five much. singers. Congrats to our five singers. We look forward to hearing you today. And I hand the mic over to DJ Lorelli. Oh yeah, my DJ headphones. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us again this week. We've got another hundred person class, which is so exciting. Um, so we just want to welcome Miss Arroyo with us today. It's just at a incredible honor to have you here. For those of you who can't see her, we're having just a little technical difficulties, but we've got her on audio and she's coming through loud and clear on audio. So she's with us, but you'll just see her little Zoom picture instead of her face today. So audio, we need it, we love it, we need the information and we're having a Tim Gunn make it work moment. <laughs> so thank you so much, Mr. Arroyo, for being with us today. It's my true pleasure. I've always loved working with you. And so, you know, I'm, I'm enjoying this. Good. Thank you. So Martina and I met, can we go there? We met at, in 2003 at the Indiana University where Miss Arroyo had quite literally the most sought after class in the entire conservatory. We had to apply to be in her class and we had to be accepted by her and the dean and our teachers to be a part of this class. She only took a certain number of students and with the entire voice department applying to be in the class, it was really an honor to be chosen to actually get to do the work with her at Indiana University. And Martina, you had many of these programs, right? You you were a part of several different colleges at one point. Where you Not really, that. I was re mainly at, at, at Indiana University. I didn't go around to several universities because that would be selling yourself short. You can't get people <laughs> to come every place, you know. Right, right, right. They were wonderful, they were just incredible, had so much more to bring than people thought. It was really an amazing class. And what we learn in that class, I use every single day to this day in my career in building my characters that go on stage. And so I wanted to have Miss Arroyo with us because I wanted her to share that information as she does in her Young Artist Program Prelude to Performance and also her role preparation classes, which are you still having your role preparation classes in New York City? Well, we're still having them, but at the moment, we're not having any of the classes because right. all classes have been cut down. We, we expect to go back to having role classes and, and regular um, outdoor classes with students who are part of the program and who those who just visit. But that will happen until another month, I think. Wonderful. So are, did you move your young artist program that was supposed to be for this summer into next summer? Will you use the same programming? Yeah, for sure. So when I left Indiana University, Miss Arroyo invited me graciously to be a part of the role preparation classes. And I must tell all of you, these classes kept me singing for years. In oh, New York City. On, no, you did. You did. You did. You were one of the few people who brought to her role more than, than just singing it. The, a personality, a person was there. And that's what you have to do is bring your own person to a part. Thank you. Know, you. So, it's a really, so. it's, they, the classes were so important to me and you were such an important mentor to me. And I wanted to ask you when you were coming up in the business, 
Who were your mentors that sort of guided you along the way? Oh my goodness, I had several mentors, but each gave a small bit of something and put them together and it made up the fat thing that you get now as me. No. <laughs> but no, no. Um, but we, we loved working the character because that the singing was one thing, the character, the personality, the, the, the being behind those words are really very important too. Super important. And how, what, what made you, what were the things that made those characters for you? What were the most in part, important parts of building those characters to you? Well, you had to know what you were saying. You had to know what was being said to you. And it had to be, as you said it, you know, it can't be thought of afterwards and it can't be thought of before. It has to be an integral part of the, of the happening. Yes. And very often in the classes, the young people either had a translation or didn't know at all what they were doing. And consequently, we would get a half person or a, a, someone who just stood there until it was their turn to sing. Right. And that we right. can't have. We have to have people who are in, involved in what's going on actively. Their heads. I always think about having it, a track running inside of my head. I have my track running over here. I have everybody else's track running over here. I have the conductor up here. I've got the stage direction back Why here. Why is the conductor in front? Because oh, you know he's always in front. <laughs> you got to keep that eye on him or else he's going to leave you in the dust. You know that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I guess did so. you feel that way too? Did you feel <clears throat> as though you always sort of had this track running of what was being said at all times so you really could organically interact with the people around you? Of course you have you you have to have that but it's, there's no way of putting it in a, a show business sort of sense. It just has to happen as it's happening. If you, you take a part, take of it, you make it a part of your thinking and it, and it becomes your, your, your character. You're, you're, you're reacting to a character. Right. And that is to say that you've done the homework at home <coughs> and in your coachings and your lessons and your, and, and everything that you've, your stage, you know, uh, blocking and everything you've done before. So that when you're on stage, you can be in the moment and make those decisions and have those reactions. Oh, you have to know what you're doing. You can't guess as it comes along. You have to know ahead of time what's happening, what to expect, and then have it happen naturally. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that becomes the challenge, I think, of operatic acting. Um, it's, but even in Not English, I think. <laughs> well, but even in English, I, I feel as though you really do have to have, you have to have built that ahead of time so that when you're in the moment, you can organically react and, and, and move yeah. and make decisions. Um, and I, I think, think you did very, very well. Oh, thanks, my love. <laughs> so when Being you, greater. all of your amazing roles, all of the amazing screen tour roles that you sang, what were your favorite? What were the favorite characters, the favorite heroines that, that you put on stage? Well, I loved characters that were not the ordinary stand still and wait till the other one sing and then they look at you and you, you move. I mm -hmm. like when you had to be always involved with what was going on. You do have to always be involved whether you're asked to do so or not. But um, the, the lesser known characters that were, were not, you, you weren't expected to do anything where you acted organically because that, that was a free, a new idea coming to your head or a new thought of that I of that a person has and mm -hmm. not of the she always thinks. So would that be the traditional characters like the Aida's <clears throat> and the Amelia's or that was, those were different things that you were more interested in? Well, there was nothing that I was more interested in than the character I was doing at that moment. Oh, okay. So that always, is. always on. But um, all of the characters have individual uh, likes dislikes that you never sing the same character the same way you, you should never uh, have a, a, a pat meaning for this character and this is the way you do it no mm -hmm. another tenor will offer something in the way he presents you with this phrase another mezzo another another conductor you know all of these people influence how you how you react and your so reaction should be clean and honest I love that. So, you know, the many times you sang Aida, the many times you sang these incredible heroines, they were always different for you. They had to be, or you'd know. That. That's amazing. I love that. 
So it was never just, this is my Aida and this is what I'm doing. It was, this is, what this is Aida. Whether you like it or not. Exactly. No. <laughs> this is what tonight's Aida will be. I love that. I love that. So, Ms. Oreo, what made you decide to give forward to the next generation and develop things like the Martina Arroyo Foundation and the Prelude to Performance program. What made you decide to take what you learned in the business and start giving it to the next generation? Well, I was seeing so many singers that came out and sang beautifully, but didn't know what they were saying or to whom they were saying it or why they were saying it. And I thought if given just that, extra clue, they'd be a totally different character. And surely they were, you know, if they had to just be nudged in a, in a direction. And that. the young people that came gave so much of themselves when they, when they didn't know that they could, they had permission to go out of character, quote unquote, and be yeah. a new character. And they were, they were interesting, they were wonderful, and they were different. I they love that. The Aida, the butterfly, the, no, you saw a, a but this butterfly, this mm -hmm. Aida. Everyone was unique. Absolutely. And I and love that. It depended on how they reacted to which tenor or which mezzo, each person reacted to another differently. And that made, that made for theater. That made you it interested does. in audience. It does. And so you've had so many wonderful young singers come out of your programs and your teaching and all of these singers share something very special in common. They all, they all tell a story in a yes, very unique and beautiful way. You know, Absolutely. Ryan Speedo Green and I have worked together and he tells such a beautiful story. And mm -hmm. as does Eileen Perez, as does Michele Angelini, it's really wonderful what you've given to the next generation and the opera world. So thank you. And thank you for allowing thank me to be a part of it so long. <laughs> and you all are doing that on your own to begin with. You, someone nudged and that's all. We needed that's that all. nudge though. We needed that nudge. So thank you. So let's nudge. give some, let's give some new singers that nudge. Let's give a nudge to a new singer. <laughs> yes, I love it. So let's start with Miss Melissa Joseph, who looks gorgeous in red over there. And okay. Ryan's going to mute us while she's singing, and then he'll unmute us when she finishes, and we'll be able to get to work. Perfect. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. My name is Melissa Joseph. I am 27 years old, and I will be singing Depuis le Jour from Luis by Charpentier. <laughs> Thank you. 
Brava, brava, brava. For all the other singers who will be singing with us, please make sure you enable the original sound on your computer because sadly what happens is we lost Melissa's fantastic high note because Zoom goes and compresses it. But Melissa was absolutely stunning, beautiful, really beautiful, beautiful singing. I'm going to throw it right over to Miss Arroyo to talk to you. And so Martina, is she, are we unmuted? Yeah, okay. Okay, Ms. Arroyo, it's all you. Is she unmuted, Ryan? Yeah? I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> um, sorry, unmute audio. We'll try that. There we go. Oh. Ms. Arroyo, are you there? Okay, I'm we there. Throw it I'm right over to you. From the beautiful singing. Uh, you know, this is one of the most beautiful arias a soprano can sing. And she always, not always, but very often sings it as though it's just one idea. She doesn't change it. It stays beautiful. But it's not really, you have to look at those words and, and say the words and give them the meaning that they have, um, that they that they offer you. She, it's, it, it's, it's a glorious, glorious piece for vo vocalism, but you also have to become uh, less vocal and and more speaking when when it when it when when it approaches that. Do you know what I mean? You can't always sound just beautiful. Yes, ma'am. And you always sounded just gorgeous, and it was just a uh, heaven to listen to. But she says other words in between that, that changes that a little bit. Um, and she gets excited at one point and she changes the tempo. We should see that in the face as well as just carrying on in the character. Your voice is so lovely. Um, would you try 
not thinking so much of it being a vocal aria, but thinking of it being a, a, um, a real aria with 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 those with those qualities that we talked about will will change and not always remain just one beautiful line. Just a beautiful line you have. When you say delicious more, the delicious, delicious, it should be different sounding than the free de jour since that day. There should be different sounds in the different phrases uh, from coming from you. This is one of the harder ones to do because it stays about the same sound throughout or the same character throughout. But nevertheless, we should see that you're involved, physically involved, and not just beautifully involved. Does that make any sense? It does. Completely. You know, let's, let's see what we can do uh, going back to it and, and, and bringing more character into it, but still keeping that gorgeous line going. Okay. Isn't it wonderful not having an accomplice? You can just do what you want with that thing. <laughs> <laughs> do you uh, want to so, go back to your accompaniment, or do you want to go line by line? I have my piano here, oh. so we could go. <laughs> Oh, shut up. You don't have to turn that, that, that accompaniment back on. <laughs> okay, then okay. let's. Um, how, do, how many different ways do you say depuis le jour? Um, I mean, you don't sing them all the same way, do you? No, and I, I don't think, think you do. I only sing the, what, the depuis le jour only one time, if I'm not mistaken. Depuis le jour. Mm -hmm. And how do, you, how do you how do you change? What do you think? What do you think that changes her her way of saying different the same words or different words? What are the words that make make you change your ex, ex, uh, your thoughts? Um, probably not just a smile. Uh, où je me suis donné the when I gave myself. Mm. Oh, that's very strong. That mm -hmm. should be very strong. Uh huh. And then go ahead. Sing it or keep going in the text? No, keep going talking first. Oh, um. Tout fleurie semble ma destinée. Uh, the flowers feel like my destiny. I guess that's pretty strong as well. Yeah. Um, to fleurie. Um, yes, it's strong, but it's, it's, um, it's, it's, it's philosophical. It's, 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 it's not, it's not, um, uh, Oh, when you say it, you don't have to get down with it. You, you you say it with beauty. You say it with love, and all of those things, those qualities. Yeah. It stays yeah. in that that tone of voice. Yes. Um, Tout fleurie semble ma destinée. Je crois rêver. I think that I'm dreaming under oh, a. That's, sky. that's a different. No, that's a different. I think that I'm dreaming. That's different. Yeah. Um. It's kind of ethereal. She feels like she's under a cloud of magic. Sure, why not? Um, uh, what does she say after that? She then says, L'amour encore grisé, my soul is intoxicated. Mm. That's much stronger than, than, than uh, just it's a lovely day, isn't it? <laughs> right, it's, it is. It's, it's it is. intoxicated. Melissa, it gets very, sorry? Saying. One, as she's saying the, the, mm -hmm. the translation of each of these phrases. You have to, you have to feel it and say it and then, not, not just a lovely sound. This, <laughs> this the aria is lovely, but you've got to bring it much more intensity. Okay, okay. Here, start from the first phrase. It's really beautiful. Sure. So we get... Well, it's not as beautiful as people think in the sense of every sound, thing sounding all the etherical and all in the air. She gets down with it when she says some phrases, they have to have meaning for her. Right. Okay, so then you bring the meaning to us. So let's see how you would change that. Good, good, okay. She's right, just general. Yeah.
you know, uh, we're getting a lot of uh, changes in tone because we don't, we're not getting the whole voice, but you're doing what you're, you were supposed to be doing. I can see on your face. Mm -hmm. But yeah. those changes have to you, you don't you don't sing these arias uh, with just one one sound. You you have to bring all of this into it. Okay, absolutely. I'm, I'm sorry, I can't. I'm, we're having a problem here. It's just, no, Mark. Here. It's okay, Miss Rio. It's it's there's a sound uh, setting on Zoom that one has to turn on in order for the voice yeah. to come out and not get compressed by the actual uh, Zoom platform. Uh, it's enable original sound, it's in your call settings under audio and advanced options, but we may just be, we may... <laughs> it's, 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 a, it's just a little setting that, that gets changed. But I, I'd also like to add to what Ms. Arroyo is saying, in, when I was in the classes um, with Ms. Arroyo, the one thing that really stuck in my head was the background information for the character and where the background information comes from and the source material that the background information comes from. And so I'd really love to know a little bit of background about Louise for you. How old is she? Where is she from? At this point in the opera, is she living where she's from or has she moved? Is there is there a change of atmosphere? Is there a change of life for her? Because it's sometimes some of those changes from the source material can actually infuse these beautiful arias and make them a little bit more in depth for you. Um, I, I'll just give you an example. When I sing Visidarte, because it stuck in my head so much from Miss Arroyo to go to the source material, the play, the Totosca play by Sardou, is always in my head. And we learn from that play that, that Tosca was actually raised in a monastery by monks. And that religion actually was so important to her because that's how she was brought up. She was an orphan and she was raised in a church. And so when she sings Visitarte, it is a true prayer. And so even though it is a beautiful aria, there's so much internal meaning to it because of where she comes from, where she was born, where she was raised. And so I'd like to know a little bit about Louise and see if maybe if some of that information could come into this aria for her. Sure. Can you tell us, for example? Absolutely. So um, to answer some of your questions, um, I personify Louise to be my age. I'm 27. Um, she's living at home. Well, not in this particular aria, but at the top of the aria, she's living with both of her parents. Um, and she's in love with a man named Julian, who she wants to marry. Um, her dad is kind of indifferent, but her mom is completely against the idea to the point where they get into, a, like, she slaps her. She just slaps her clear across the face. Um, and so Louise eventually ends up leaving um, this town in, in France, um, Paris, I believe, or outside of Paris. Um, and so this aria takes place at the top of the act and she is now married to Julian and she's really loving her life with him. Um, and so That's I think- That's amazing. Yeah, it's I think- such it, a wonderful part of the story to know that this girl sort of, you know, sat in her house and probably dreamed of having this life with this man that she yeah. loved. And now she actually has it. Yep. Right. And so yeah, then and when she sings the aria, she doesn't have the opportunity to tell the story before. It has to be there in the story that that, that which is told and that which you have lived have to come to, has to come through your voice. Absolutely. That's the only some chance that, you get to show that. Yeah. Absolutely. Some of that some of that happiness, some of that, oh, I made it. Can yeah. I, I'm living my dream. I mean, she actually says my dream has become a reality, mm -hmm. right? Yep. So think back to maybe five years ago when she was sitting in her house, looking out a window, dreaming of a better life. Then it makes it makes it more important to her. Mm -hmm. that makes sense? Then you can color the words even a little bit more like Miss Arroyo is asking you for. If they go a little bit deeper, think about your own life. Think about 
you know, when you're 18 going to college, dreaming <laughs> about that debut at the Metropolitan Opera, and now you're on this crazy master class singing for the incredible <laughs> Martina Arroyo, you know, uh, see that beautiful smile, you, you remember that. You remember that feeling, so put that in here too. You know, you have that that association to to change what these words mean and make it more important. But don't let the music change the color and character of your voice. Yes. Okay. You still have to keep that there. You have to remember those things. So try, let's try doing just that, having it along with the music, and not one destroy the other. Mm. Okay. You want, can you restart your accompaniment there? Or sure. do you want to keep going line by line? Um, I can restart the accompaniment. Fact, wait a minute. You must start with the accompaniment because that's where the whole feeling comes from. Perfect. It comes through the accompaniment. So she, ha you have to feel that before you say it. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Will do. Can you, when you hear the accompaniments, are da -da, you're already in the mood of the Fille Jour. You don't come into the mood. Gotcha. Can you, can you feel that for a little bit for us? Let's see if we can get that. You know. Okay, stop here. That wow. that was much, much more felt. And I think also when you're not being watched to be this um, someone to say something about it, to criticize, you can get yourself more into it and not and let, not let that bother you. Okay. But when you're up there to be criticized and you know that's what people are going to do, you, you, you react to it. Don't, dis, don't disrespect your personal character from the character when you're singing because the, it's not easy to do, to let go of you and go to, entirely into her. Absolutely. Melissa, at that time though, when you said, my soul is drunk remembering our first kiss, mm -hmm. we felt that, we felt that you did. first kiss. <laughs> yes, you did. Yeah, we, we, we got chills going, oh wow, she's so in love. You can go there. Your technique is beautiful. So you can go into those emotions, that memory of when you fell in love, that, oh, God, that change but of you life. have to be told that you can go there. People oh, have God. to, you have to try it. You know, you just don't go there wondering, am I doing this right? I'm being watched. That's, that's the wrong way to approach it. When you get up to sing for someone, you have to leave all of those people behind and just let the character and you work. And that's not that easy to do. No, we work a long time to actually be able to do that, don't we? A long time. And you had to work that way too, of course. A long time. And Everyone does. Yeah, absolutely. Melissa, absolutely stunning. Beautiful vocalism. Thank you for going there with us. 
We're going to go on to our second singer. Everyone's applauding you. I know you can't hear them, but they are applauding you. You really have a stunning instrument, so thank you for sharing that with us today. A lovely, lovely place to go with it. Yes, beautiful. Absolutely. Thank Absolutely. you so much, Mr. Royo. It's been a pleasure. Take care. Thank you. I hope to see you again. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Ethan, you are up. Hello, my name is Ethan Burke. I am 23. I believe you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> my name is, I believe it. <laughs> That's me, Ethan Burke. Uh, and okay. I would like to sing Lunge Lei from uh, La Traviata. Okay. <laughs> Bravo, bravo tenore. 
Bravo. And Marcy and I throw over to you, honey. Your character was there as well. Your character was there. Vocally was there. He was, he was been, much was there. Can you hear me at all? Oh yeah, we hear you. Okay. Okay. Yep. Uh, really uh, wonderful singing, but when you sing these things, you can't get you can't let them get take over your voice. You have to stay in charge of it. You know, you have to be the one who's on top all the time of your voice. And that's not so easy to be. Uh, so that's why some of these arias at 23 and at 22 are just a little much. Yeah. You know, whereas someone at 30 can handle it a little bit more. They have a little bit heft to their body. They can do a little more with it. Uh, I think there's no doubt that you will, will sing the Duke one day and, and it'll be a big uh, part for you. But right now, maybe it's just a little bit heavy, just a tiny bit. What does your teacher say about that with you? Uh, Alfredo. I have been working on for about a year. Um, just, I'm sorry? I've been working on Alfredo, on Duca, on uh, Nemorino, like in that Italian lyric repertoire. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm Yeah. Okay. Well, let's keep it more lyric than right now. In order to live longer, stay as lyric as you can. Sure. Okay? Because the tendency you now is just to give it a little bit more heft because of the character. Yeah. And, and you want it to work. Yeah, we all want it to work, and it does work. But I think that you, if you gave a little bit less and took the character lighter, say take sure. him as a man lighter, you can do it with your voice. Yeah. Ethan, you you want to try really a little bit of that? You can really go for the young love, you know, this yeah. is his first love. This can be, yeah. this can be your college girlfriend. Hey, Jennifer, are you doing this class or am I doing it? We're both doing it. We tag team, lady. <laughs> we are, huh? Yes. <laughs> no, but you're absolutely right. Let, let your character come through your, your voice at all times. What you're doing is giving more voice than you need to give, really. Sure. Do you want to oh, can we right. try a little bit? Yeah, sure. at the beginning? Yep. Uh, let me skip a little bit of that intro. Oh, that's right. They don't, they can't go immediately. Yes, it's hard with the, with the phones. <laughs> Ready? Yeah. It might be a comedian. <laughs> <laughs> interrupt you you know you go in and out of the character thinking yeah. when, and you have to stay in the character so that you can carry on through you go yeah. out of it and then you think about it and come back in Jennifer do you see what I'm what I'm seeing I, do. I absolutely see and I think Ethan just remember even though you're trying to lighten it up and be a little bit more youthful that doesn't mean your technique changes right yeah. don't lift the larynx up to make a lighter brighter sound Leave well, how much seat. more youthful do you want to be? <laughs> exactly. Don't light, lift anything. Just, just feel your age. Feel twenty three. Feel he's twenty three. Yeah. Right. Don't make yourself any older or or too young. Don't don't lift the larynx and hold in order to make something younger. But yeah. I see exactly what you're seeing, Martina. Really con connect with those words, Ethan. Think about her. Far from her, far from her. For me, there's no joy. I love her yeah. so much. I don't want to do anything else but be with her. Yeah. And you don't have to be so loud. You're, you're, you're sort of forcing the words. Yeah. That's just so that I 
we understand every single one. Whose finger is that? It was oh, mine. Sorry. <laughs> it was mine. <laughs> Uh, uh, to, to make your, your, your point made, and nevertheless, okay? Yep. Let's try the beginning. Let's try the Retro Steve again. I think you can play some of that, that um, intro, Ethan, I, because I think you want to feel that. It, it builds that youthful excitement in you. So, so play it and let, let's, let it build inside of you. Sure. Yeah, but I don't know if he wants to do it with, with that much excitement. He, he's oh, saying, um, I'm sorry, he's, he's saying, away from her. I mean, what is this? It's not this excitement. It's not that, it's not frenzied excitement. So I just want him to get that, that youthful mm, butterfly feeling. Does that make sense? That yeah. get internal butterfly. Let's hear, let's hear him do that. Let's hear, let's see if he can do that. <laughs> running in he comes in Okay, now you have the color from the second phrase of this. You had the color in your voice before it was too much, too too given. Okay. Do you can you hear it there? Absolutely. Uh, uh, oh yes, absolutely. I loved you know. I loved that. Yeah, that these, these should be easily sung. You're by you're by yourself. You're you're saying it. You're not saying it to the world, yeah. or, or rather, you're not saying it to a group of people. Okay. <laughs> Beautiful. So you want to try it again, or do you want to just uh, uh, leave it? Uh, just a clarification. So where did the coloring really feel like it settled in? Was it at just the Sua Benetza? Well, the first couple of times that you did it, long it was so anxious. When you came in the last time, it was more relaxed. Lungi yeah. da You know, the, it was much more relaxed. Ethan, I really <laughs> loved from Ele Pompose Festi. It was was really beautiful, and then the change of color for Di Sua Bellezza. Re I really felt like you were thinking about nice. her face, and that was nice. yeah, really yeah. beautiful. And then when you started Or con Trenta, you should start in that same beautiful color. It doesn't mean to pull off the voice. It's just it's just a change of color, a change of the way you use the text. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah, totally. Can you? Can you start from there, um, maybe from Ele Pomposi I don't know if it's hard with your... Um... Well, let's go from the beginning, because there's a change okay. in, the, in the beginning. Perfect. Suor 
If you good. start here with this and then go into the aria, it'll be right. Yeah, yeah. start right okay. there. You got it now. You got exactly what Mr. Royal wanted now, that youthfulness, that beautiful color. Gorgeous. Yeah, and it's so much easier. I'm not pushing through it. It's just relaxing yes. off it. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You don't have to do all of that. Yeah. You don't have to push through. Okay? You have all the voice in the world, okay. Ethan. You can just use that beautiful color and, and sing easy, sing easy, and, and relax into that. It's really gorgeous, beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Start just the beginning of the aria very quickly, and then we have to move on. Great. 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 <laughs> Pause for just a second. Martina wants to say something to you. I just when you said them, yay, their word it's wordy and not uh, not a phrase. Keep it. Keep the idea of it being a full phrase. Okay. Okay. Because that will make the difference between just being sung at and being really felt through. Felt sure, 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 sure. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Ethan, it's really beautiful. Thank you so much, sweetheart. We have to move on to the next singer. However, I think really you found that youthful, beautiful place that we wanted to go from. Keep your technique. Keep that beautiful, relaxed. Oh, so the longer you keep it, the more beautiful it will be. That's right. Yeah. Stay as youthful as long as possible. That, that is so right, Miss Arroyo. So right. Okay. Leave that voice malleable. Yes? And Bravo, Ethan. Go. Bravissimo, bravissimo. So much. Such a wonderful opportunity. Thank you. Okay, Miss Deirdre from all the way in Ireland. <laughs> well, actually, Jennifer, I have to correct you there. I'm so sorry. I am definitely an Irish soprano, but um, I'm coming from the UK, so I live in oh. the East, East Sussex now. But yes, very proud to be Irish. And Perfect. Fly the flag constantly, so thank you. Good job, girl. <laughs> Okay, whenever you're ready. Go. Okay. So, um, my name is Deirdre McCabe. I'm an Irish soprano living in the UK, and I'm going to sing La Contessa Zara, Aria, Por Amor, from, of course, Le Nozze di Figaro. So I too am on my iPhone for my accompaniment, but I think we're ready.
Bravo, bravo, bravo. What a beautiful voice. Gorgeous. Bravo. Bravissima. I don't know if you can see everyone. Everyone's applauding feverishly. It's really stunning, stunning work, Deidre. Stunning. Oh, thank you so much. I'm going to see Indeed, you. Indeed, it was a pleasure there for me as well. Really. Oh, I haven't gone in. We have to sometimes check the, the this TV. Um, the, the only thing is in the aria, which seems like one color aria it's there should be many colors Absolutely. coming from you and we you don't show us your different your changes you don't show us where where you where, where your your idea has has gone from one thing to the other and we need to see it in your face as well because then it will go into your voice as well in your sure. voice lovely so um if you could just allow yourself to be honest with the words yeah. Don't think of it as being one line. Just think of it as being or something you're really saying. That you bring back my love to me, or let me, or whatever, whatever you're saying. Die. No, oh, I'm sorry. And um, bring back my love to me, or let me die. Yes. Or, or rather, you know, but, but that's a very strong sentiment. Absolutely. And it's very um, the voice is extremely even, and that and that's nice. Um, could we hear a little bit more of the first voice, of the first verse? Of course. Just the, yes, just to hear Would you like the through. accompaniment or no? Oh, yeah. I'm sorry? Yeah. Uh, with the accompaniment, with the track? Yeah. Yes, please. Yeah. Okay, lovely. And before we before we move on, and, and, and for everyone on the class right now, I, I want to reiterate again that the thing that stuck out the most with my from my time with Ms. Arroyo is that following that source material and allowing that to come into where we are now and if we go back you know this is rosina yes this is rosina from Bardier, yes. and how much has her life changed from the end of baviere to now when at the end of baviere she was young and in love and so happy and everything was amazing and now she's saying let me die if i don't get my husband back what you know, if you wanted to have is. all of that, you should have had half the number of people because there's so much more to it than just singing the words uh, to the, it's not a going back to her, it's how she, how she changes herself into make yeah. these, these words have a different meaning. Yeah. It, it's okay. all possible. But yeah. when you come in and with a finished product and you're given one chance to do it uh, and you don't know how much more chance you have, you don't, you don't treat it the same way. I would yeah. love to treat or uh, compare her as uh, Rosina to um, to to the Countess. That there would be an enormous difference in how she's seen this. The evolution. And there should be. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and and you can allow some of that to, again, infuse these words, even though we're into a different opera and a different time. And yes, you only do have one shot to, to 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 show us what you have in an audition or here or wherever. You can bring some of that though into into even just an audition to make sure. it more important for yourself. And then she doesn't become more. just a, a same sing songy uh, singer uh, that you hear one one style singing. It becomes interesting because yes. she is, makes interest in the, in the in the way she says this. Absolutely. It's not just porjo amor. It's porjo amor. Think about that okay. as you start. Think about okay. that. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping that it's at an appropriate stage within the accompaniment. I'm just going to see what happens. <laughs>
to be recorded at the tempo that you want. Mm -hmm. Yes. And there were times when it was just pulling back and you couldn't move at all. And that yes. doesn't help you at all. Even with the recording, you can help yourself. Yes. yes okay? And, but the and it's, it's too lovely to be missed. Your voice is much too lovely. Mm -hmm. Okay? Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, Deirdre, that really, uh, adding those colors, that makes you a world-class countess. Wow. <laughs> really, really. I mean, and especially, I mean, and the chat was blowing up when you did, oh, and the oh comes out of absolutely nowhere. And you can feel the sadness in that. And we want that. Yeah. And you can, you can do that in an audition. No problem. You're not overdoing. You're not overacting. There's no nothing. But the sentiment is there. And, and then you move me if I'm sitting behind the table. You know, okay. and I, I then I remember, and then I say, "Wow, that that girl moved me in an audition when I heard forty people today." You know, <laughs> you can go there. You really, really can. In this, I know in this setting, it's hard with this recorded accompaniment and this and that. But at least we get to work, right? At least we get Absolutely. to. Absolutely, I'm so grateful for this opportunity. It's amazing but to work. Really, with you. Thank but you so what Mr. Arroyo is saying is, is, is makes you. It makes you a world class countess, and those are very hard to come by. I'm, I don't know that I've heard someone sing that aria that easily in a very long time because that aria is hellish. It's very hard. That means a lot to hear that. <laughs> it, it really is. Very very hard. Hard. Yeah. <laughs> Bravo. Good luck to you. Very Thank much. Thank you so, so much. Thank you so much for the opportunity, and it was lovely We're to meet you. So happy to have you, honey. Well, we'll hear Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank okay. You. Thanks a lot. Okay. Okay, Amanda yeah, yeah. in Texas. Are you there, girl? Amanda, Amanda can you hear me? Yes. Yes, yeah. I hear you now. Okay, awesome. Uh, um, hi, um, my name is Amanda O'Toole. I am 29 years old, and I will be singing Ernani and Bolami. Let me get started. <laughs> so you pianist, I was like... Thank you. 
Brava, brava. That's a pistol in Aria to sing too, let me tell you. Isn't it? <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> and you open the show. <laughs> you know. Brava, Amanda. Brava, brava, bravissima. Yes, mm -hmm. the, the chat is blowing up. Everyone loves you. <laughs> okay, yeah. Mr. Royo, I turned it over to you. Well, thank you. You didn't do that with anybody else. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, it's an honor to sing it for you, for sure. My dear, it's an honor to hear you sing. Uh, and it's one of the most difficult arias, and you have to have it under your belt with your accompanist under the belt as well. And yes. then today you really uh, gave it all you had. Um, for me, you could sing some of the phrases a little lightly, so more lightly, so that when it comes to the heavier phrases, you can then give on them. You know, okay. there was so much give that when the time to really give, yeah. for me, it was just too much. And mm -hmm. that's the way it always is with these Verdi arias, the big Verdi arias that mm -hmm. um, you don't have the time to work and you don't have the time to work the pianist. So maybe don't choose this one for your next, uh, with a, without an accompanist. Make sure you're with the accompanist and, and you have the time to take your breath mm -hmm. because you have it, you know. Um, th there could be a little bit more shading uh, in, from piano to forte. With, when you're doing it with a, with a recording, the tendency is to try to give too much. Everybody does because you say, am I going to make it? Are we going to be together? But you have a voice and you have to make your accompaniment adjust to what you're doing, not you adjust to the... And you can do that with a recording by simply making sure you know which one is doing what, when. Mm -hmm. Does that make any sense to you? Yes. Sometimes yes. I don't make sense for myself. Um, <laughs> It's so hard. It's so hard with these. It's so and, hard. And a lot do. of people are using the accompanist app, which is which is great, and you can speed it up and you can slow it down. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, obviously, the app doesn't listen to when you want to breathe. <laughs> it gives yeah. you what no, it wants. No, and you, to but you have to make sure that you know what it is and then stay yeah. with it. Okay. You know, that's the only thing you can't let go because mm -hmm. the success of this aria depends on exactly those things. Absolutely. So, you chose a big aria, you sang it with a big voice, and you had big success. So thank you very, Agreed. very much. Agree. Agree. Amanda, you sound beautiful. Um, should we go back to the recitative and work work sure. from there for a little bit more colors and shading, some more pianos? Yeah. Sure. Do you want the whole intro or just right before it starts? Hmm, probably not the whole thing. I can go back to the right a before. A little bit before, a little oh. bit before. And really think about those words and give us some some atmospheric um, setting up of, of how we should feel in this moment, yeah? In colors. out of a window and she notices the weather has gotten bad and Silva hasn't returned yet. There's no reason for her to yell that okay. because nobody's there to hear it. Okay. So, so that should be a little bit more on the on the on the on the normal level, you know, not not necessarily singing to someone. Okay. You know what I mean? Okay. It's more and then when you stay with that, ah non tornase più, isn't he ever gonna return? Mm -hmm. All right, you stay with your words there. Okay, let's try that one again. If you want to do it this way, uh, 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 Jessica, you take a lot of time, but we have, it's worth it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's okay, do it. it's worth it for her. It's very, very worth it. I mean, she's she's a very Absolutely. special voice, a very special girl. Well, then she has to. <laughs> someone you're, you're making a comment you know my the, the night is, is is really very dark and and silver hasn't come back yet my gosh it's not the night has not returned you know you don't want to make it a statement 
Okay. Because then when you make a statement, it should be a statement, okay? Try okay. to make that statement to the voice. If you're going to do this type of work, that it uh, retentive takes time. Yes. Okay. Okay. And, and so, here, let me give you the the lead in, so you don't have to keep going back to the tape. It's not for dialogue. You're not seeing too oh. soon. Okay, so just more introspective overall, I guess. Exactly, exactly, darling. Okay. I'll, <laughs> I'll do my best. Just sing it right straight without without giving him too much chest. Okay. You destroy the character, okay? Let's do that on, on your on your to the phrase just before on your mi segue. Okay. Sorry. Oh. Oh. Oh, thank you. Oh, sorry. Questo di Oh, that was uh, okay. Glad you said that. It's easier to work. Easier to work a little bit that way when you can work recitative. But the lag, Absolutely. if Absolutely. I try to play it anything, is terrible. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Brava! Just start the aria for us. <laughs> We actually have a pianissimo written there, sotto voce. Yeah. And then, un Eden di delizia. Un Eden starts at the piano and then a crescendo. So perhaps some of these beginning, the beginnings of these phrases, you can start a little bit more quietly as you crescendo into the top and it will save you in this heavier. None of this, none of this recitative makes, takes full voice. She switches mm -hmm. while she's talking to herself. And this yes. is—it's totally in in a uh, into a, into herself, so she doesn't need to ever get loud. 
Okay. I love that. Yeah. It's, it's such a great, I mean, it's a great observation. She is, she's just, it's internal. She's just having an internal monologue on the balcony or looking out the window and waiting for him to come, right? So it's, what I also love is it made, the, the thought of this made you relax into your body even more. Yes. <laughs> and I noticed that when you started the Ernani, it, I really felt you relax and that was really lovely. So try just, just at the beginning, Ernani, Ernani, Volami, one more time. I don't know if you have a stand there, but just check out a couple of the dynamic markings as we get into the Ti uh, seguira the, in your pie, in your pie, just to kind of use some of this idea that Mr. Arroyo is trying to get where we don't use the full amount of what you have to give all the time. We can use a little bit less and then expand when when it's time to do that. Yeah, just start it one more time and we'll start, we'll stop after the Quelliantriame after the. Um, so just up through there. Okay, thanks, sweetie. <laughs> Because actually you lead the, the going ahead. They don't have to pull you ahead. You should be pulling them ahead. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay? Bravissima, Amanda. Bravissima. Mm -hmm. Amazing. You sound mm -hmm. fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. It's a wonderful It's just perfect for you. <laughs> and okay. I love, I love, I love that the chat is blowing up and go, and when you relax at the beginning of Ernani, Ernani, Volami, everyone said, oh, it just opened. <laughs> relax. Oh. <laughs> really beautiful honey yeah i just have to stay calm and yeah <laughs> you, don't have to, you don't have to do anything to show us what you're thinking you can just think it mm -hmm. you can just know what you're saying and think it and feel it in the moment and be organic and the sound frees right up with that you don't have to you don't have to show us anything mm -hmm. because it's all it comes out it's a coming million out times my love a million times. Mm -hmm. It's really, you're really so, 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 so good. I love the voice. Thank you. Bravissima. Bravissima, Amanda. All Thank right. You. Thank you, Mr. Roy. Okay, Mr. Darius, are you there, honey? Yeah. Hi, can you hear me? Hello. Yes, I'm we sorry got we're you. not on together. Hello. Give me a minute. Hello. So happy to be here. Thank you all. And everyone oh, sounds great. beautiful. Oh my gosh. Inspiring. Thank you. Bravissimi. Okay, honey. Hello, my name is Darius Thomas. I am 28 years old. Okay. I am originally from Texas, but I am now currently, due to the current situation, in Portland. Um, and I would like to introduce Yvette Sarki. She will be accompanying me today on piano. And I would like to sing La Donna Immobile from Vergi's Rigoletto. E di pensiero, sempre un amabile, leggiatelo viso, in bianco riso, e menzoniero, la donna è mobile, qua più il marvento, muta da cento, e di pensiero. 
penitentiaire. Okay, now we're okay. Thank you. Now we're good. Lovely. Bravo, okay. Darius. Bravo. Thank you, thank you very much. Bravo. Indeed. Mr. Rio, are you there? Yes, you are. Okay, good. I'm here most of the time, but I have been away a lot oh. with this one. My our, our television has been working up. Please forgive me. I heard very what I heard was wonderful. Thank you. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. You sound fantastic. Hello. I love your space. You look great. Okay, Mr. Mario, I turn it over to you. Is she there? Mr. Mario, are you there? Wow, that's nice. I expect that. <laughs> um, it's a pleasure hearing you. You know, in the pitch, and the, uh, that has to be cleaned up a little bit because without, without that being just right, right. You're, gonna, you're gonna be criticized for that. And I'm not sure whether it's you or my machine. Uh, you know, in the pitch, and right, you uh, machine during this opera, this aria. Okay, mm -hmm. so it might not be you. It might be. Um, it, it might be just. The, I'm kidding. I don't know because we did have problems. Oh with yeah, the he, can. he can. I know him. No, he that's can do not it. fair. <laughs> Do it right. Uh, yeah. It's not fair, uh, really. But thank you so much. I like the, your your involvement with the character and your involvement with with your with your work. That's all very very good to see because it looks like you're not afraid that you're ready to go out there and let them have it. And that's what people yeah, want yes, to see. Yes. yes. What did he say? He said, he said thank you. you. Have to jump. Yeah, oh you have to no. Take a leap of faith oh, my pleasure. Fail, no matter what. Well, is there something you want to ask? Um. Oh, about the aria. Well, hello again, <laughs> Mrs. Hello. Mrs. Oreo. I um, yes, about the aria in particular and singing it. Whatever you want to ask. Okay, I would love to ask. Um, my the hardest thing is the 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 start of this piece and the start of the second verse, of course, because it's so to me middle voicey, and I tend to want to mm -hmm. over sing and be like la da na i mobile and it's yeah, more it relaxed. Is a pitch, yes. Yes, and I'm pushing my face off. I know it. I don't mean mm -hmm. it's just young tenore, I guess. But I, <laughs> but yes. I would lo love to work on that and some advice that you all have about just cleaning that up and closing the folds more. Well, sure, you must clean it up before you could take the aria out on tour. Because if you yes. don't, you'll be criticized for it and criticized badly, and that's okay. not fair. No. Uh, you want to get your pitch exactly on in all spots. You know, that's not always on. I'm not sure whether it's my piano or whether it's a combination of the, of the two machines together working or not working together because we did have problems here. It's but your good. voice is lovely. Sorry? Mr. Royo, did you hear it riding high? Mm -hmm. it, it, it does ride, but I thought I could high, be. Riding high, right? Yeah, so yeah. It, it is him. Yes, no, no, it, it is. is. And it's um, okay. serious, honey. Remember when we worked, Darius and I have worked together before. I absolutely love this gorgeous voice and I love oh, this person. Too. He is really just one of the most thank wonderful you. people that I've met. I oh, love him so much and correct those who are in mistakes, yes, huh? Absolutely. So when we saw each other the last time, remember yes. we talked about the, the tilt of the larynx and the turn a touch earlier than you had been doing it previously? Mm -hmm. So that you, when you go up to it, 
you're already turned on the first. And yes. then it's just all in one line up and down and you don't have to think about grab yes. turn. We don't Yes, want grab turn. No grab turn. No. Because grab, everyone, we know this from the last couple of weeks, when we grab and hold the larynx from these muscles right here, we hold it too high and it's not allowed to tilt to elongate the folds to actually make the pitch that you're trying to sing. The folds must elongate. They must be elongated. And in order for them to elongate, the larynx has mm. to lower and it has to tilt. Has to. Scientifically, right. that's the only way you can make it happen. So when you think about where you're turning, think of it in the breath that your tilt begins when you take that inhale. So when you think of your turn, for example, I have to take my score out to see it, but where you start, you're not turned, just nice and relaxed. You got to think of that first note already going towards your turn. Yes, so we're yes, not going and trying to lift and squeeze because lift and squeeze go, makes you ride high. Yes. Yeah? Go, yeah. So start from the beginning and really think of this. He should be me, he said, uh, anyway, he should just still be me, he said, uh, loose. Me, he said, uh, exactly, me, right, me, exactly, me, loose. Me, me, Remember we me, talked me. about Darius, that little French Y being yes, a perfect e. vowel yes. because it has that ooh throat space and E resonance. So he said, and then you're in the same space. You're already tilted. You're already ready to go. And you can just go straight up. Try Fantastic. that. I Try would that, love to. <laughs> first, okay. Yeah, just go from the beginning. And I think um, what Mr. applied, what Miss Arroyo was saying to Amanda also applies to this aria. She was saying, save it and sing more piano until yeah. the place is where it's needed. So when you start La Donna e Mobile, that's playful. La Donna e Mobile, qual più You don't have to do <laughs> so much there. Wait till yes. the end. Wait till yes. wait till it's really time to you know right. fly. We get so excited. Okay. Of course, of course we get excited. Hello. Okay. Where the heck is this aria? Yes, this drum. All right. Go ahead, honey. La donna immobile, cuor più mar vento, mutata cento. Would you start on the correct pitch? So you can then go from there to the next. La do, na la do, na. I know my preparation is all for that. I mean, yeah, so if you get that right, it'll help the next three notes. Try okay. to get that right. La, okay. La do, na immobile, qual più il mal vento, muta da cento, e di pensiero. Sempre una mobile, leggiadro viso, in pianto riso, e menso miero. La donna è mobile. No, that's sharp. No, 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 no. That one's sharp. La do, has to start down. La do, la do, no, è mobile. So release in the breath. Feel that larynx release with it. And ha get that pitch right in the center. You don't have to turn yet. Okay. Now turn. Now, when you come back off, don't shut the space down in order to come down. Yes. Leave that space open and turned. Yeah? Yes. It's already open. Leave it open and relaxed and free like you just had that wonderful G. Yes? Yes, start right so from good. there again. So we start right in the center of the pitch. Yeah? La donna è mobile, qua più il mal vento, tutto da cento. You go off there. It's you have to stay on the pitch there. That's right. Don't think about pushing at the note in order to crescendo it. Okay. Think about changing the shape of the vowel. Don't think about Chanto. Uh -uh. Chanto. Think of 
how to release to crescendo it because what happens is we start pushing at it and guess what happens it sharp. goes sharp yes yeah and the vibrato becomes inconsistent change the shape of the vowel instead deep in the vowel and allow that to open the crescendo rather than pushing air i love that already i love you do it <laughs> Bravo, but don't grab it on the way back down. Ah. <laughs> yes, bravo. But you understand, then you go up much more easily. You don't have to push air. You don't yeah. have to grab and, and push up. It's not necessary. And, and it's a kind of against science. <laughs> yes? yes? Go on. It's beautiful. Air deepens. You're nice and relaxed. Then, when you do your uh, that uh, you got to be already turned on that F sharp. You do not want to turn as you go up, I promise you. Be turned already. Go up vertically from that turn. Don't try to turn during the phrase or else you're going to grab and push up and it's going to go sharp. That's exactly what I tried to do. Okay. Don't do that. Okay. All, right. All right, no more. <laughs> go on, go on. Eddie Pensier, ba da da, be da da. Eddie Pensier. Turn it. Change the shape of the vowel going up. Yeah, it needs more space. More deep and deepen it. Okay. Yeah, deepen it. Uh huh. More, more space, not less space, and grab. Okay. Yes. Doesn't that make better. you happier in your life? I feel like much a different better. voice. Much, Another much better. better. Much better, really. Thank you. Much better. Then start the next phrase in that same playfully buoyant, more but play with the text, play with the tempo instead of pushing at the voice. All right. Yeah? Try. Go from the second verse. A uh, couple couple measures, yeah. Okay. Oh, sorry, it's wrong place. It's e sempre, not e sempre. Yes, e. e sempre. It is simple. E sempre. So open that vowel, you'll be happier. Okay. Promise you. E sempre misero chi a le saffida, chi le confida, mal cauto il corre. Pur mai lo sente si felici a pieno, chi su che se no, noi li va morre. Now let's go. Non hai mo più, ma più il mal vento, tutto doce. Open. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Turn it first. You gotta turn it first. Okay. I, I promise you, you don't want that F that way because it rides high. He already turned and open and tilted and happy. The rest was gorge. The rest was perfect and super relaxed. And we get the sense that like we're like okay, calm. Yeah. Yeah. We like that sense. Go from that F, F sharp. I mean, already turned, already ready for what's coming. Okay. Open, deepen. Don't grab it at the end, please, oh please, God. please. Yeah. <laughs> Everything at the end. <laughs> Bravo. So much better. Indeed. Yes. Indeed. Darius, don't think that you have to do more than you need to do also. Yeah? 
Don't feel like you have to push more, you have to give more, you have to do this, you have to do that. When you actually release that and l allow that larynx to lower and drop and, and just be free, we get the pitch super in the center of the voice and we get this wonderful opening in the upper overtones. That's what's going to carry the voice into the met, not pushing at it. Right. Yeah. That's what we and want. the character's fun. I love him. Like He's not too he's, comedic, you guys. I think he's very char I think you have him very charming. Don't you agree, Mr. Royal? Indeed I do. Yeah, I, I think you really he is playful in life. It helps that character very much. I because agree. that's the playful as the character, but there's a certain amount of uh, this youth and wonderful attitude he has comes over. And he's sexy. I mean, there's a reason that Gilda. Darling, you're sexy. seeing things that I don't see anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a reason that Gilda wants to be with him. If he's just right. a complete schmuck the whole time, why would she go? Exactly. Why would she go and. and you know, want to be with him? Why? Why would she follow him? Why would you know? Yeah. There's a certain amount of charm. So I think you have it right. I I really do. Awesome. I was worried because you know this is the ultimate womanizer. You know, and I, it's like you want to play the character, but also give him a little truth. No, but that's the reason. The womanizer has charm. That's right. That's right, and that yes. is his truth. That's the thing. Whenever you're playing a villain, whenever you're playing someone who's who you don't you know, think is morally or ethically right. You have to play the truth of that person. And there And remember he's also something else. He's besides being a villain, he's the prince. Yes. Yeah. Excuse yeah. me, that's quite a person. Yes. <laughs> She's I like absolutely that. right. Yes. Find something about him that you can make true. You know, find at any time you, you play a villain. I mean anyone who's gonna play Scarpia on this call. Yeah. Scarpia is not a bad guy. He just, be, his beliefs are wrong. Know this thing, no. his, he believes that and he's, he is, he's true in his beliefs to himself. He does terrible things, mm -hmm. but to himself, he's not bad. He's, he's right and he's righteous. So you have to, you have to grab onto that part of the character and allow that to be your truth. Even if you don't agree with it as Darius, right. Right. you know, you know, that's important. Yeah, yeah. This is Bravo. so great. Thank you for the opportunity, you guys. You're really wonderful. Thank you, honey. It's a pleasure hearing you. Really a pleasure. And I'll hear you someplace else when you come up yes. and say, "Remember that time we sang together?" Yes, <laughs> of course. So I'm gonna open it up in the chat now for some quick questions before we let Miss Arroyo go. I'm gonna scroll through and see if we have anything here. And while I'm scrolling, you guys feel free to shoot some questions <coughs> in the chat here. And we'll ask a little questions and then we will let Miss Arroyo go and have a wonderful day. Um, let's see, scrolling, scrolling. Hey, it's Ryan, been a sheer are you pleasure on? listening to you, really. It has been, and watching you change and try to change. That's wonderful that when you have people that will try to change. Isn't that great? I love that. Yeah. I love that everyone is so open. They're so yes. open to trying new things and it, it's really, it's, it really warms my heart. It really does. Okay. I'm scrolling up. All right, guys, questions, questions. She has a wealth of knowledge. I promise you. Okay, here we go. Lindsay Brackage wants to know, how do you know when it is time to move into a heavier fach? You know, that's very, one of the questions you're very often asked because we, we often move into the heavier fach sooner than we should. Mm -hmm. We should stay in the lighter fach as long as we can. Um, but when you do finally make a move, you try out with a part. And if it's absolutely the same feeling or no feeling singing it, you can try it again. I, I don't think you should ever rush into a, a change of fach. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so often we, we change with one performance. I, I don't think that's right. And changing you have to get takes the a long time. Actually, yeah, and you have to get the character. You have to get all the other parts of the fach. You do. And not just if it feels good. There's there's a lot that goes into changing the fach. I mean, it's, it's yeah, really... You might feel wonderful that day. <laughs> yeah, but the next day you will be like, oh, I'm so tired. You know, it, it, there's a lot that goes into it. Um, I can say to to everyone, since we all know, even Miss Miss Arroyo knows that I changed, made a big fach change, 
Um, I think, what did we do at IU, Gilda and Manon? Gilda? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Back yeah, in the remember, but if you weren't very easy to change. You came in with your ideas. Well, you and know, then, <laughs> I learned. <laughs> well, that makes a difference. <laughs> I learned quickly. <laughs> mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. the, the fach is hard to change because once you are in, especially the lighter fach, you do have the muscle memory of that lighter fuck. And it, muscle memory is a very hard thing to release and change, yes. very yes. hard. And so for me, when I made my fuck change, it really took four years to complete where I could sing a full role in the Lyrico Spinto repertoire from the Dramatic Coloratura repertoire. It took four years to really solidify the technique so that I understood not just in one aria, not just in two arias, but in the, the scope of an entire role, how I was going to feel, how to keep the technique relaxed and free, and, and how my body was going to feel. Because, and I'm, I'm sure, Ms. Arroyo, you can attest to this, these big roles, they take a lot out of your body. They make you tired. But I didn't change from a lighter fach into, into a heavier fach. I was already in that fach as a, right. as a lighter uh, singer seeing it. So right. it was just a matter of growing right into it. If you are made for the fach, you know it. If you have to go into it, you know it. But you, yeah. both ways you must uh, approach with care and with constant uh, um, treatment to careful of the voice, being careful of the voice. Yes. And I, I, I just have to say this because it, it really was a turning point for me. When I was leaving Indiana University, Miss Arroyo pulled me aside. I don't know if you remember this at all, but she pulled me aside and she said, Jennifer, your jaw is shaking uncontrollably. And that is a problem in the technique. You need to find someone to get that free for you. You need to find someone to help you with that technique. And I'm not kidding you that those five minutes helped me so much along my path that someone had taken me aside and said, listen, there is something major you have to fix or else you cannot do this career. And I don't know if you remember this, Miss Arroyo, but it meant so much to me. And then I found Rita Shane and thankfully yes. she helped me with that problem. Yes, but, but you were one is... of the singers that listened and that helps a great deal. But you do <laughs> yeah. have singers that don't listen and they think that no matter what you're saying, it can't be right because what they think is right. And right. therefore, you don't, neither of you go ahead. Right. Uh, right. You at least have to give it a try and, and ask someone else, do you see this too or do you hear it as well? Yes, absolutely. I agree. So Julia Catherine Walsh would like to know, Miss Arroyo, could you tell us perhaps how you were able to watch the conductor on stage while still acting so convincingly? Oh, you're able because it's one big viewpoint. You, the, the conductor, the orchestra, the characters on, on stage become one big whole. You, it's not that the conductor is a small point and you have to know when he's moving his arms what that is. Um, he, it's, it's not at all difficult. As a matter of fact, I find it easier to watch the conductors than watch some of my colleagues. I agree. Um, <laughs> I agree really? With you. Yes, I totally uh, agree with you. <laughs> Where is he going now? Uh, you never, that's totally right. You never know. Where is he going now? <laughs> yes, I think I'll just stand here and wait. Uh, but the conductor, you usually know where he is and how he wants it done. And you have rehearsals. Rehearsals are so meaningful that you go to your rehearsals, that you take care of what you're doing. Yes. So uh, the conductor is not your problem, but believe me. Mm -hmm. And don't throw away those wonderful four to six week rehearsal processes. Oh, no. Use you must those. Have. You don't always know which ones didn't stay. Yes, because they help so much to develop that character for when you're going to do it again. Getting it in your body is such a huge thing. Enjoy that long rehearsal process. Sure. It's so when important. you get a long rehearsal process. When you get Exactly, when you get one. Um, we have from Sol Rize, what repertory do you recommend for a soprano in her mid-20s, around 26? What voice? Uh, Sol a soprano, a, light soprano, heavy soprano? Sol is a lyric soprano. Uh, the repertoire that does not re require a great deal of pushing, mm -hmm. you know, as the character. Um, I think that whatever you do, you should approach it 
whichever whatever course you take, you should try singing the parts um, with your with a, with your full voice, with not pushing. So the, the, when you start pushing a, a part from the beginning, you ruin. You start by ruining your voice. Yeah. And you, I'm sorry to say that, but so many people were ruined far before they admitted that they were going. You're 100 percent right. It's so hard. It's so hard because you, as a singer, you want you want to do these things. But as we said last week on on our class with David Lomeli, sometimes you're just not ready yet. Yeah. And those things have to wait. We had Dom, Dov, David Lomeli on last week with Ooh. us. He was uh -huh. wonderful. And we were talking about repertoire and he heard some young singers as well. And a couple of young singers were singing some things that were just a bit too big for where they mm -hmm. are mm -hmm. in their vocal development. And he said, you know, and you know, David was a tenor, wonderful tenor in his own right. And he said, you know, I understand as a singer, it's very hard. We want to do it. We want to go out and do that big thing that we're excited about or sing that aria that we heard on YouTube and we're excited about. But sometimes in our vocal development, it's not time for that yet. And we need to be able to have a team around us and, and within ourselves to be able to say, no, it's not time yet, because that makes you that push. Person and has that person to be you honest push. with you too, but exactly. honest, really honest. Exactly. So that's, that's super important. Um, Bonnie Joy wants to know how much of my own interpretation can I bring to my characters, even with knowing the original intent of the source material? How much of her own interpretation can she bring? Well, when you're studying a part, you're bringing all of yourself, really. Uh, you bring a great deal of yourself when you start on stage, but you can't go uh, absolutely against what the character is because you feel it should be something else. You have to sort of stay within the realms of what the, the, the composer meant uh, with how it's explained. Let that develop. Go learn from your colleagues what they're, what they're doing with, this, with the different words with the same opera. Um, you, it's amazing what you can do. I, I, I remember hearing uh, uh, someone sing the uh, Traviata rehearsal, and I thought it was the most perfect Traviata, traviata I had ever heard. And she was not rehearsing for someone else. She was doing Traviata rehearsal for herself. Mm -hmm. And I thought, my goodness, if she does that for herself, what is she going to do when a director is there? I think the director spoiled <laughs> it. Yeah, that sometimes happens. That yeah. sometimes happens well, where, really, you have but director, I mean, you have where you have a director with a different idea. Then. Oh, oh, very often you have that. You know, so you have to adapt because that's your job. You've been called mm -hmm. into that production and that's your job. Yes, there's a balance of. But you Laura. should know what a basic to me, what the character means, because the composer tells you. Absolutely. The com composer gives you those things pretty much. You can't make her an elephant if he's a cow. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I can't make her an elephant if he's a cow. I love it. These are the things I was called in my career. That's all. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay, Theron wants to know, how long should I work on a role before I go out to audition for it? Until you are so sure of that role of what you say and what you are, that you can take an, a question about it. Absolutely. Very, very sure of yourself in the technique and the character. Yes. But not necessarily bullish that you can't change. You have to be able to change too. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Julia, Emma, uh, Emma asked, how do you, Emma and Julia want to know, how do you balance physical acting with vocal acting? How do I balance them? How, yeah, how do you balance physical acting with vocal acting? I think they mean how do you act with the colors and the dynamic changes and things like that. Yes, Emma's shaking her head. While also doing the physicality of the role, how do you keep all of those things going at the same time? Work at it. <laughs> practice, practice. <laughs> Emma's laughing. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, okay, a couple more. Hannah wants to know, when performing arias out of the context of the opera, perhaps for an audition, how much staging and moving and quote unquote pretending as if things around you uh, is appropriate in that situation? At what point does it become overacted or inauthentic? So how much staging and moving... overacting when you reach out for something that you know is not there, but you're insisting on reaching for it and making people believe that uh, or th think that they see it too. You can do, make those same movements with much less. Okay. Uh, you don't have to show every little 
um, everything that you want to show. You might show, show a character, certain things in a character and leave it at that. Leave it at the, is that your hand? No, oh, sorry. Yeah, I'm, scre I'm scrolling <laughs> through the chat. Go ahead. Oh, no. um, I think that you do as much as you can with what you have, what you're given always, and, and no more than that. If Excellent. you don't, don't have something that you might have needed, but someone doesn't provide it or it is not known by the other person, then you leave it out. Absolutely. And I will say just from, you know, being the person who stood uh, doing auditions for a really long time, don't do any staging. Don't walk around and try to pick up cups that aren't there and read a book that pick isn't there. Cups. and don't oh do my that. Gosh. <laughs> don't do that. No, please Just don't. Stand oh. and, and be organic and interpret your character in a very in a very organic way based upon the text that you're saying. You know, it is presentational, right? It is out of the context of the opera. You don't have cups and papers and this and that. You don't have those things. So go with the emotion instead. Go with the feeling. Go with the text. Go with the storytelling. Tell a story and make those judges understand what you are feeling rather than, oh, I, I need to pick up this, or I'm, I'm singing Norena and I'm reading a book. Don't do it. No, no. Don't do it. I've seen it no, so No, wait a many. minute. There are some people that are asked to do that and they do it well. There are some people that are asked to do what? To do nothing. Yes. And, and, you, and the others don't get it. You know, there are, there are many situations with, with reading a book. Or, or, yes, or saying, have, that other, have that article in your hand, get it. Yes, I'm just saying in an audition situation, if you're going into an audition. In an audition situation, you can take your book. Oh, well, there you go. She just <laughs> gave you permission, so take your book. <laughs> yes, and don't tell my name, please. <laughs> but don't pantomime the book. No, 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 not pantomime. This is a book, and now I'm turning a page. That's I don't right. know. I don't, I don't talk that very much. I like I that. I haven't seen it successfully done very often. Okay, last question, and I like this question. What advice would you give, this is from Arlisha Edmondson Thomas, what advice would you give to a full lyric spinto soprano who is transitioning into the Verdi repertoire? What Verdi role did you learn slash perform first? Aida. Aida. <laughs> Why did I know that Aida? Um... I think a lot had to do with what I was being hired for. Yes. You know, so that it wasn't just a matter of picking a role and saying, I'm going to learn this. I had learned the Aida, but um, then I was asked to sing uh, Balo and asked to sing other roles. And, and that had a lot to do with it. Mm -hmm. If I hadn't been asked, what would I would have known? What would I have chosen? I don't know. Be honest. I find the early Verdi the the verity that sits in the more bel canto style um a bit easier for people transitioning into the verity i don't know if you agree martina but it's something that either. doesn't go so further it doesn't go so much into like nabucco don't go there for no <laughs> i would go into nabucco even now um <laughs> nabucco is one of those things roles that you don't just try right um but you certainly can do other roles, uh, Verdi roles, that uh, run the gamut of being light, light heavy, mm -hmm. both. Mm -hmm. If it's a matter of learning something, you can look and see what you're being called to do, because a lot has to do with do you sing these parts, or are you just learning and, and, and learning to work eventually? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think there's also a lot of mm, there's a lot of other things to to take on before you jump into Verdi too, if you're a young soprano. Oh, yes, I thought we had gone, we had said we were gonna go into Verdi, but before you can certainly, for, for, my, for my money, I love singing Mozart. Mm. Yeah. And I find Mozart, it's difficult in some places, uh, just as difficult as Verdi. As a matter of fact, I don't find Verdi difficult at all. Right. But. Right. I agree with you. I think a, a full lyric to a spinto soprano, you, you could do Donanna and, and have that as a transition into some bigger repertoire. Donanna is quite a difficult thing and it's, a, you know, it'll help you with the coloratura that you'll need for the Verdi. It'll help you for a beautiful legato 
Lion, you could look at Vitalia, you could look at Electra, you could, I mean, Vitalia any of those. Is wonderful, isn't she? Vitalia is wonderful. Yes. Oh my goodness. Really, some of these, some of the bigger Mozart ladies will help you with that transition. And for me. And they're often being done by some group. Yes, and I they're done so much. But they're being done someplace. Yes, they're done so much. And and even, you know, uh, Elvira, if you, you have that voice that wants to move that way, you, you can try Elvira. Um, but these, Elvira? Uh, Don Elvira, Don Elvira. In, in Giovanni, Giovanni. I like her. I like yeah. her very much. <laughs> but those things, that was, you know, those can be a very good transition. Donna Anna and, and Trovatore, for example, is really the same vocalism. It's the same coloratura um, kind of facility that you need for both. So maybe try the Donna Anna first while the orchestra is a bit lighter and then move into the Verdi things that have the coloratura like the Ernani or like the Trovatore or something like that. Um, there's other things without jumping right into to uh, singing Aida or, you know, whatever. Martina had the best Aida I ever heard. Oh my no, God. No, I'll tell you what you're asked yeah. to do has a lot to do with it. What you're asked to do. By what other you're other asked people. to do. Yeah. You know, if you have that on your score, you on your plate, you learn it because you have to learn it. Yeah. Uh, unless you are one who says, I will learn things in the time that I want to learn it and not in the time of the theater, that the theater wants me. There are very few who can do that. Yes, very few. But, um, Yes, you need time. You need time with these with these things. Um, you know, now that we're we're not singing here in, in the United States, it doesn't we're not gonna get back to singing, you know, anytime really soon. Pick up that role that maybe you've always wanted to learn. I did. I picked up Norma three weeks ago. I'm learning a scene a week for the next six weeks. And that's mm -hmm. my goal because I've always wanted to learn Norma and and it feels like Oh, butter, you know, so it's doing it. good. Oh, I love it so much. It's good. doing good things vocally, but also it's keeping me focused, you know, pick up mm -hmm. that role, pick up, try Donna Anna, see how she feels. Now you have time, right? With character. Yes, with, and yes, just develop that with character. character. Yes. Be surprised how different it is. And take the time to develop that character. Certainly, yeah? like so, of course. Of course. Translate every single word, every single little teeny dot, e, il, every single little word, every word must be translated. Every part of speech, not just the poetic translation, that doesn't help you. You have to know every single one, what tense it is, where, who, what everyone else is saying to you. Again, not poetic what they are saying to you word for word so you can react to a specific thing very specific very organic take the time you have the time now to do it right so do it it's all it's i mean all of these things that i'm saying i learned from miss arroyo way back in the day at Indian you University. did not you did those I things did because you wanted to <laughs> no but, but you taught us so much i'm telling you i mean Listen, I have the motivation. I'm going to do it, but yes, you I, use it. it but like there are some said. people who don't have it, and you have to tell them to do it. Those unfortunate people have to, nevertheless, follow the rules. And yes. that is and it's like you said, you need a nudge and someone to give you permission, and you gave me the permission to do that. And I am very eternally grateful for you for that. And I know everyone on the call is very grateful to you. And we thank well, you I'm so very happy much. I'm very happy to have you and to see you grow so beautifully and to do the many things that you're doing, not only in music, but outside of music. I'm just, thank I couldn't you. be proud of a prouder mother. Oh, thank you. Yes, you're a big proud mom. I love it. I not love big. it. I'm, I'm just a proud mother. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much for being with us, Mr. Royal. Thank, thank you. you, everyone on the class today. Thank you to our beautiful singers, Melissa. Oh, yes. Oh, Ethan, yes. Deirdre, Amanda, Darius, you all were spectacular. You all were open minded to try new things and to go internal and go there. And we appreciate you for that. Thank you. Um, for everyone who is on the class today, thank you. Please follow us on social media. Martina's foundation is the Martina Arroyo Foundation on Instagram, Facebook. Prelude to Performances on Instagram and Facebook. Uh, the Fort Worth Opera, obviously mine, La Rowley, at La Rowley One. 
Um, at next week, we have a big, very special guest from the Academy of Vocal Arts in Philadelphia, Scott Guzliak, who is the head of the Academy of Vocal Arts. And we will be talking about young artist programs and auditioning for young artist programs. So tune in next week. If you would like to audit that class, please send an email to masterclass at fwopera.org. As with every week, those of you on the class get first dibs. So if you send your email this week and you want to be on uh, an observer for Scott Guzliak's class next weekend, we would love to have you get your email in and you're in first in line. And as with every week, we thank you so much for being here. If there is a way for any of you who are in the class, if you're feeling inspired and you can give us a couple of dollars via donation, we would very much appreciate it. This class is free. We are not asking you to pay for anything every single week. All of this content is free. But if you have an extra $5, an extra $10, and you can give it to Fort Worth Opera, we all would appreciate it very much, and it will help us in bringing you all of this content all summer long. We've started our midweek chat series. We have some lectures coming up midweek, one with a certified accountant to talk about taxes for singers, to talk Dream about movie. building an LLC. Oh. Um, we have another Zoom lecture with Jenna Wolf of Lenny Studio about social media, how to use it how to use the algorithm, how to hashtag, all that stuff. And we have another complete seminar with voice scientist, Dr. Ronald Shearer from the Voice Foundation, who is going to talk to us about the science behind vocal health, vocal fatigue. And my husband and speech pathologist, Raymond Diaz, is going to be, us on, be with us on that lecture to give you exercises on vocal fatigue, how you can keep yourself healthy, all of that. So all of these Zoom lectures are going to be a part of our series. And like I said, if you can spare a couple of dollars, we can keep all of this content coming to you all summer long and we hope also in the fall. So thank you all so much for joining us again. Miss Arroyo, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here with us. And for sharing my pleasure. Your knowledge. Very much my pleasure. And everyone, we will see you next week for Scott Guzliak on auditioning for the app. I love that everyone is like jumping up and down in the screen right now. They're making me so happy. <laughs> you guys are great. Thank you so much. I feel all of your energy on the screen and in the chat and everything. So thank you. Thank you all so much and have a wonderful rest of your weekend.